So let's understand exceptions a little bit better. Remember that on inputs like this, the client wants us to raise a particular exception. The particular exception is a value error and they want this particular uh, message to be a uh, part of that illegal format and then whatever was given. And similarly on an input like this ABC, they want something similar. And once again, if you had tried something like an illegal month, again, they wanted something similar. So you would have checked with your client and you would have found that they're consistently replying the same type of error. So now let's try and write code that actually produces this kind of error. Now the way we are going to write this code is as follows. Firstly, we will split the string by date. And then we will try and do what we want it to do. But if somehow that fails, then this will cause what we call an exception. And in the except situation, we will try and clean up the mess. We will try and report this particular exception that our client wants. So what I'm showing you at this point is a screenshot of me trying to write this code in my IDE. I wrote try colon and once again whenever you put a colon there is a block of code which is indented. So in this region of the code I'm going to try and do uh, operations that are potentially dangerous that may cause an exception as we have seen on inputs like a slash b slash c, converting a into an integer raises an exception. And then when I come to the end of this block, when I de-indent, my cursor is blinking here and my generative AI is suggesting, oh, I can see that you are trying to convert certain things into integers. I know that that can cause a value error like we just saw. Now our friend, is very, very perceptive. Our friend looks at this code and says, not only can it cause a value error, it can also cause an index error. So for example, if the string did not split into uh, three parts, there may not be a oneth item in that string. We saw an example where the input had no forward slashes and then the list only contained a singleton. So this is very good from our uh, friend. So what we will do is we will slightly modify this suggestion. We will say accept and then we will open a round bracket, a parenthesis. And the minute we do that, two things happen. Firstly, my IDE closes that bracket for me. This doesn't use complicated tools like generative AI. But then my generative AI suggests, oh, I see you are talking about the possibility of two types of errors. So this prompts my generative AI to stare at this piece of code a little bit more carefully and does recognize the possibility of both a value error and an index error. So then it suggests, well, in either of those cases, perhaps you want to return a string invalid date. Remember, our function is always going to return a string. But this is not what our client wants. Our client doesn't want to return a string. They want to raise an exception, an exception called value error with this particular message. By the way, whenever you have this kind of syntax where we have something inside brackets and then we have commas inside, that is something called a tuple. So in this case, this is a tuple containing two items. What this is saying is if we have a value error or an index error, then we will do whatever is in the except case. In this case, our generative AI is suggesting that we return the string invalid date. It's a reasonable suggestion, but it is not what our client wants. Our client wants us to raise an exception, not return a string. So we will ignore this part of the suggestion. We will uh, say in this case, raise a value error and then our AI can help us complete the necessary string to return based on our client's request. Now looking at this particular code, we can see that if one of these two exceptions happens, then we raise this particular exception as the client requested. Our friend looks at this and has a suggestion. Our friend says it's better to catch not just these two exceptions, but 
all exceptions that might happen over here. Who knows what other kinds of errors might be caused by the input that was given. And so our friend wants to, in some sense, play it safe. The way you can say that is get rid of this tuple entirely and just say except colon. And then this will catch any kind of exception that happens over here. This seems like a good idea. But is it what the client wants? This is something you should always get good at. Don't assume that this is what the client wants. Firstly, can you imagine an input on which something other than one of these two exceptions could have happened? For this, you might have to know more about Python. And then consider whether if one of those exceptions happen, does our client still want us to raise a value error? We would have to ask the client. As I keep mentioning to you, this is a very important skill and it's really worth developing.